Trusting God when a relationship ends. One thing most of us have in common is that we all have been brokenhearted before. To this day, I remember how much pain I felt after my first breakup. Every day, I would beg God to restore the love of my ex and I had for each other, and prayed for everything to go back to normal. One week, two weeks, even three weeks later, and my ex had still not been touched by the Holy Spirit, kept rejecting my desperate attempts to salvage the relationship, which in turn just made me more miserable. So I got angry, angry at my ex, and more importantly, I got angry at God. You know that kind of teenage anger where you blame everybody else for your situation without assuming responsibility for yourself. In my mind, I was convinced that God had ordained that relationship and that He wanted us to be together. So where did I go wrong? Had I once again misread the signs of God about the relationship? But no matter the fussing and fighting, the verdict was out. My ex was not the one God had for me, and I had to accept that. Even though a no was not what I wanted to hear, it was very powerful. I learned how important trusting God when a relationship ends was to my spiritual growth. While it was hard at times, I understand now that God will sometimes end a relationship for your own good. You may not be able to see it while you are in it, but believe me when I tell you that you will thank Him later. To help you find comfort now, I am sharing some of my personal takeaways to the question, why does God break up relationships? Three reasons why God will sometimes end a relationship. Number one, it was only infatuation. Do you know the difference between infatuation and love? If not, then that might be one of the reasons why God said no to your relationship. A lot of relationships can be described as emotional, intense, and draining. They may start off as a situationship and later on evolve to a committed relationship. However, they don't have the right foundation in place. A relationship that does not have a purpose is oftentimes built on infatuation, that intense state of desire and attraction that you experience at the beginning of a relationship. When you are in such a relationship, you often mistake infatuation and lust for love. You then start to make excuses and settle because of your desire to be with someone, even if he is not God's best for you. What is the difference between infatuation and love? According to the Oxford Dictionary, infatuation is an intense but short-lived passion or admiration for someone or something. According to the Bible, love is patient, kind. It doesn't envy. It does not boast and is not proud. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, and it never fails. Excerpt of 1 Corinthians 13. To break it down a little further, when you are infatuated with someone, you feel like you are on an emotional high. You are blinded by your own desire for affection and their perfect appearance, so you think. The only problem Neither the feelings nor your current state of being are sustainable and doomed to die down. In contrast, when you are in love, you agree to a long-lasting commitment to take care of your partner. You are well aware of his flaws and don't lean on him to make you happy. Moreover, your love for him remains strong, even when the honeymoon phase is over. Number two, the relationship became an idol. The second reason why God takes away a relationship is closely linked to the first one, yet worth pointing out again, and that is idolatry. Idolatry is something we are repeatedly warned about in the Bible. An idol can be anything you desire more than God. It could be a physical object like money. It could be a status symbol like success or beauty, or it could be the approval of other people. For women, it is very often the desire to be married. The idol speaks deceitfully. Diviners see visions that lie. They tell dreams that are false. They give comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wander like sheep, oppressed for lack of a shepherd. Zechariah 10.2 If your past relationship was the highest priority in your life and dictated almost every aspect of it, including your time, your focus, your finances, 
and your walk with God, then the relationship was your idol. Mind you, I'm not talking about the actual person, which is possible too, but I am more so referring to the relationship itself or let's say your new relationship status. As someone who has a track record of getting into the wrong relationships, before I was serious about my walk with God, I can now honestly say that a lot of times I was in it for the wrong reasons. My main driver for pursuing a relationship was oftentimes society's pressures to be booed up. Therefore, I would try to make it work no matter what, which made me compromise my core values and forget my self-worth. I repeatedly caught myself dropping my godly standards to accommodate a nonsense behavior. I wanted to remain in a relationship so that I could showcase it to my Facebook friends and continue using hashtags like hashtag his and hers, hashtag bay, and etc. Stupid, I know, but Instagram was life at one point. So how can you avoid making an idol out of a relationship and withstand its influence? by questioning your heart's desires and getting to the root of it. Ask yourself why a relationship is so important to you and then give it to God. Once you understand the joy that lies in living for God and direct all worship towards Him, you begin to love Him so much that you refuse to pursue anything else. Number three, you don't know true love. One day I came across the following and it made me think, most of us spend our time trying to find love, trying to live in love, but dying without ever truly discovering love. Love, what life is all about. It describes a very basic human desire to love and be loved. A quest every human being has been on at some point in his life. Even little babies long for proximity and emotional reassurance from their mother or father, which is provided through love. At first, I connected with the quote because I felt it described my past relationships very well. I thought back to the many times I had desperately tried to make a relationship work and failed. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this quote wasn't talking about real love, but it was talking about superficial love. The small, limited, and worldly meaning of love used to describe a relationship between a man and a woman. However, Real love is so much more than what we see in movies and transcends the human definition. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 1 John 4 8 As a believer, we have the honor to know and be in a relationship with our author, creator, and embodiment of love. What God has done for us and how much He values each of our lives is an act of unconditional love. That's why when we give our lives to Christ, we are blessed to truly discover love. A godly relationship will only work if you discover God's true love for you. You have to learn to love yourself and your partner the way God does. That's when you discover the power of real love. The above these three points explain why God will sometimes end a relationship. If you resonated with them, then chances are that they are the reasons why God took away a relationship. Luckily, you and I are still young enough to learn from the past and use God's wisdom to guide us in the future. So take heart and learn to trust God when a relationship ends. Trusting God when a relationship ends. The first thing most of us ask when God takes away someone we love is, will God reunite me with my ex? We are so desperate to get back together that we do not take the time to truly reflect on the health of the relationship and what the purpose was. But as mentioned above, when God will only end a relationship that doesn't honor Him or is built in the wrong foundation. So before you ask if God wants you to get back together with your ex, ask yourself if the relationship was godly, healthy, and empowering. Did your ex have a relationship with God? Did he make you feel closer to God? Did he have a purpose in life and for the relationship? If you can answer all these questions with a yes, then there is a good chance that the relationship is serving a bigger purpose. But if the answer is no to most of those questions, then you should be happy and ask God to heal your broken heart instead. Because the only way you will be able to trust God when your relationship ends 
is if you truly believe that he works things together for your good.